Lago Marcino. We had tried so hard to reach the old site within it, but it failed each time. This place, I couldn't get it off my mind. There was something special about it. It was a window to a lost time, a source of connection to a lost people. I had to get there, but how? We had already tried to make it through the rough terrain, but we were not prepared. We requested help. After being aided by others who were already on the trail, we were met by Ralph, a volunteer off-road first responder. I obviously wasn't ready to drive to Lagomarsino again myself, but I knew someone else who was. Wise man once said these words, the third time's the charm. We're about to go. Again, this time we're gonna have success. We're heading back out there with the guy who was sent to help us. He uh, works for a volunteer off-roading rescue team. So we're going with him, his brother, and we're finally gonna make it out there. I'm sure it'll be a little difficult still, but uh, I have confidence this time. Ready? Third time's the charm. <laughs> oh, it's your third time? It's your third try. First try, we were routed to a bunch of other routes, and uh, it's on private property, so. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting there today. I was so interested <laughs> in the, um, the volunteer, you know, rescue operation. That's awesome. So, yeah, I became a volunteer with a 775 off-road recovery probably been like three months now yeah and it's a great group to work with you said you were just just helping some people yesterday is that right yeah it was a 24-hour uh, trek oh. the person that was stuck he was a search and rescue he was a search and rescue person himself yes no way our group got a hold of search and rescue out of our county uh -huh. And they said, if you guys can't get to them, we can't get to them. Wow. So, needless to say, the other search and rescue person is highly bad yeah. at search and rescue at the other county. When I went to go in Saturday night, it was like 10 o'clock at night. And Jeez, I no saw way. the water crossing, and I did not feel comfortable making it through that water crossing. And even if I would have made it through, the other two vehicles weren't gonna make it. Yeah. They didn't feel like going. Yeah. So we pulled out of that. And then the next day, they got some heavier rigs, yeah. taller tires, got to the people. They had to go through three water crossings. No way. Possibly four. And that's where the vehicle Jeez. was stuck. Wow. And they spent 24 hours in that, and they weren't going to get out of it to try to walk out. There's not many people who will do these things out out here off road like this. No. You guys definitely beat Triple A. That's that's for <laughs> sure. Triple A don't go under. <laughs> and they don't work for free either. Nope. We're all volunteers. Yeah, that is <laughs> awesome. What what got you started in it? Something to do. Yeah. Wanted to learn more about off-road recovery. Yeah. And people that get stuck. Yeah. Well, you just, guys are your real life superheroes, as, <laughs> as cheesy as that sounds. It's it's the truth, man. Just like a first responder. So, you know, going out, like going out here where we're going today, where you were stuck. Yeah. If it wasn't for you being stuck out here, I might not have ever gone down this road. Yeah. It might take me three, four more years. Yeah. So people that get stuck. You got some experience. Get me to places I would 
right. probably not normally go. Right. Yeah, we usually go out a minimum of, hopefully a minimum of two people, yeah. two vehicles, and all this will be running radio so we can all communicate. There you go. And how many guys do you have? I think there's over 100, 100 members. I think there's over 60 or 70 active. Oh. And is that just that are qualified to go out and recover people? So we got northern Nevada pretty well covered. Yeah. Southern Nevada is a different story. That's another group down there. Yeah. So that's why we're called 775. All right. This is rougher than I remember in this <laughs> this area. So we're going down the center one, and up here there'll be a nice field of flowers coming up. The main trail goes, was the one that went to the left. No, nah, we're on the correct one. Oh, I'm going to give you a close-up view on your side. Oh, right here. So farmers just let them roam around yep free graze how do they how do they make sure they don't run up how do you even track them down i have no idea <laughs> that's what that's i've been wondering do for that's what that's why wondering. we're not farmers right one thing i'd like to do is get a defib what's that defibrillators yeah 1500 bucks no way they're that expensive Put some blood bags in the in the trunk. <laughs> Get everything. This is where I found you guys right around the corner. Yeah, okay. So we did make it a little bit further. Yeah. This is when the situation went from like, you know, this scary the oh shit. Yeah, exactly. It, it it got real at this part when it started raining and hailing and we're up here and the GPS people are telling us we needed to stay put because they don't have a connection to you. So they're like thinking <laughs> you're gonna get lost out there, but we're already halfway up here and we can't go back and Yeah, and now we're, we're worried we're gonna slide. I don't even know how we got through this. The, <laughs> how did we get through this? And this was all muddy when I had to come back yeah. through and I turned around down here. Yeah. And I'm like, man, all but outside to the to the right. Yeah, it was I was worried left. about you when you know we didn't see you for a little bit, so I came back. Yeah, it just took me a little bit to get turned around. Yeah. In that edge. Yeah. I'm like, oh man, I'm hoping I'll hope it'll slide. Yeah. No, I slid. Yeah. I'm like, okay, now I just gotta go for it and get out. Yeah. And we passed a vehicle that was three foot over the edge. It started raining and hailing on us. Oh my gosh. And that's why I kind of laugh. Yeah. I'm like, go figure. It's It always has to get worse, does it? It's gonna rain and hail on me again. Yeah. So on that one, I couldn't even angle onto the vehicle to pull it out. I had to find a pinion pine that was up high. Yeah. I had to pull my truck into the bank. Yeah. To a shackle back to his no. that was off the edge. And I had to use the side of the hill as my ankle so I wouldn't move. Jeez. It actually pulled me over probably about another three feet before it, before it stopped. That is scary. My question is, how, how do you get over the the sort of fear of of these missions and stuff? Because I'm I don't even do anything close to what you do, but it, I get so nervous going out to some of these these places that are more in nature. You know, the ones I get, the ones that, that I have to go out to at night. Yeah. I don't know what I'm running into. I don't know who you are. Right. My dispatch only has your name and number. Yeah. Basically, they don't know who you are either. Yeah. So, are we running into a trap? Yeah. It could be. Yeah. But thank God it's Nevada. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know how I'm going to hit this. I guess we're just going to go for it. How you doing back there, Amelia? You nervous? No? This was the final stretch here where we, we oh, yeah. this this was the top area. I took the inside corner, Wayne. 
I'm at. Because you get to this wall section here uh -huh. that we almost felt like we were going to tip over on <laughs> to get through. And then, then you hit a bunch of these big rocks. Oh, two of them. See, it started to get real bouncy here. That's when we got nervous. Just take it slow, because if you are on a off camper, yeah, you don't want to hit it hard. Yeah. So you go up on the side, and it gets bumpy here. So I'm gonna lock in the four low wave hole. Yeah, this shit. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know how we how we made it. In the part that you wouldn't think we got stuck at, we did. It wasn't raining when you came up this one. No, it? it was. It was got good. Lucky. Yeah. So this is almost it. So now is the fun part. Yeah. Because this is where it happened. I think I'm gonna. Uh, stay over here to the left and I'm gonna let my tire roll off this one on the right and this is where lowering your pressure down to 20 yeah to give that cushion go over yeah. the rocks it's the furthest I've ever been out here now so Spencer blew his tire right in that area where we came through so how does this compare to your other trails you've been on I'm sure you've been on far worse <laughs> This what do you one, think? This one so far is not too bad. More, this one's more rockier than the Tomo Trail. Yeah. The Tomo Trail, just to get up to Tomo Mines, it's like 45 minutes. And it's bad. And this is more rockier than that. So, yeah. as far as rockiness, this one's got it so far. It's a little old rock wall there, you see that? They talked about I don't I don't know if this is the one, but there's there's a rock wall that the Native Americans built around here to divert the game okay. towards them. <laughs> That's why you don't come out here unless you got got this thing. We got fish over here. Do we really? Yeah. Let's head back. <laughs> All right, so we finally made it to the site. We got a drone flying up here. We're gonna go check it out. I haven't really spotted the things yet. Ralph's seen them. Danny? Yeah, I don't think we're quite at the area yet. We'll have to move up a little bit more. So we got another one of the cross hatching sort of petroglyphs here. Oh, yeah, yeah. What's that? Wow, look, there's, there's several of them in there. That's one hell of a lens he got there. <laughs> we see the third Pirates of the Caribbean movie where he takes out his little telescope and <laughs> the guy's got the long one. <laughs> so these were all the way at that top at one point. Yeah. Oh, there's some on the top here. And on the sides. See him right there? See him? Oh, yeah. You can get up close, he won't run.
here's one right here in front of us. Oh yeah. Do you go up that one up there? I think so. We're halfway there, right? Yeah. Yeah, they say that they don't think this was like a permanent encampment. They think it was like a ceremonial site oh, where wow. Native Americans would just pass through and then add carvings to it. They, they'd hunt while they were here, but they didn't find any like evidence of settlements or anything. See, those are more faint, like the scrapings. That one's interesting. Man. That's right. Wow. And you know, you see all these these dots in the rocks too. I wonder what those are. If they're like some chisel strikes or something. Like I don't know what those those are. Yeah, and it looks, this looks intentional. See, they got the circle around this, this well, part the there. Perfection of the rock. Yeah, and you got what I think of as a snake there, but I don't know. Scratching marks. I wonder if that's from sharpening arrowheads or something, if you do that, I don't know. I guess you just chip arrowheads. Yeah, it'd be odd for Native Americans to like, come and carve on just, you know, fallen rocks, right? Yeah. Imagine like, what if it was just a huge rock facing up here at one point with all those and then just collapsed? Who knows, man, it's crazy how much the world just changes over time. And no one, no one learns their language and that's why every time. Right, yeah. Yeah, some of them may have been carved by settlers and stuff. Those don't look as old old or intricate. There's the wall. You see it? Look. That's the main one. Okay, I see, see they would they would herd the have the animals come down this way and I guess they'd put blinds up in the hills or maybe down by the, the creek bed. Yeah. Modern researchers say this place wasn't a profitable hunting site, but a culture site where people would come to carve symbols. I've continued to meditate on it and I've wondered, why then would these walls be built? Why was nothing made of the walls which many researchers claim were used for hunting? I imagine the effort that had gone into making this. And upon further investigation, I realized this construction was much more extensive than I had originally thought. Not only did the walls wrap the hillside, they'd also dipped to multiple sides of the stream. We'd seen some of them on the way to the valley. It was a massive animal funneling system, if the initial theory was correct. Would the people of this region really have built this extensive system just because they were there, or was this a system for taking advantage of a rich valley? Aside from the walls, there are a few possible structures surrounding the valley, one which is definite. On the southern side, a little ways from the wall, stone foundation. There's a small dirt road that connects to it. In between this and the wall, more faint outline, which may or may not be a foundation. On the eastern side of the valley, there's a similar case. Were these of Euro-Americans, Native Americans, or structures at all? I wasn't certain, but they were very interesting, without a doubt. I believe if all these structures were created by the same people, the layout would have been something like this. The central and prime hunting spot being where the petroglyphs were overlooking. From this vantage point, you could see the whole valley and the animals that would funnel in. There was a wall or a possible structure on top of the cliff, maybe a blind, the principal observation point. Whilst waiting or to bless their hunts, these people would carve on the cliffside and on the rocks. When animals neared, they'd signal to each other from their blinds and vantage points. There were old campsites in the area as well, possibly from their time, when hunts went late or when others passed through the valley. 
Ideally though, I don't believe they would have wanted to dwell within their prime hunting spots, so as not to put off the game. So they'd stay a little further away, maybe in those potential structures. The alternative theory, maybe not quite as exciting, was that all these structures were built by Euro-Americans during the early expansion efforts of the nearby Virginia city. But we may never know, for sure. So that's where the rescue went. <laughs> Got a bunny thing else. Definitely not human. Don't see any Native American signs yet. Look at him go. Popped out his neck. That's a good shot. See, that looks more settler there. So there's a few more this way, but apparently the main section we haven't even reached yet so i'm sure we've seen probably a hundred or so petroglyphs there's a cool one here i'm going to check out then we're going to go this way we'll see what we see wow that one's interesting huh it's got the eye with a mark through it what do you think that one means amelia Snake fish. Snake fish. And style of something. Okay, that makes sense. Oh yeah, the goat, look at that, wow. Ooh! <laughs> wow. Who did this? Ancient Native Americans of this area. 10,000 years? This area dates back as far as 10,000 years. I don't know if this was carved 10,000 years or not. Yeah, because this looks Looks new? Yeah, looks new. <laughs> to make you hungry? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You see some more? Huge big one up here. There's just so many everywhere you look. Yeah, the good thing is we saw one set. The other people didn't get to see. Oh, it's one Big one. So the sign here states that the site goes back at least 10,000 years. I don't know when these were carved exactly, but check out this boulder here. There's a star on this one. Hmm. And there's this elongated figure. I've seen this several times. I don't know if it's some sort of spirit or deity. Poseidon. Poseidon, she says. Maybe the Greeks were out here. <laughs> wow. Some markings there. Wow. Maybe they pay hunger man. Huh? Hunger man. Hunger? The, the game. Hangman, hangman. Yeah, hangman. Yeah, maybe it's hangman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got these dots here. Maybe these are stars, but I, I don't have any idea, just initial thoughts. But there's even some human figures, stick figures, in there. Look at all that. I'm shaking on the rock. Another camera shaking. There's a webbing. It looks like a cobweb there of a petroglyph. More. Here, there's a horn figure. I've seen this a lot as well. Now we're getting to more 
human-like figures. Wow. Now nobody knows exactly what these petroglyphs mean. We can only guess today. But they were sacred, no doubt. Obvious effort went into making these. There's over 2,200 petroglyphs at this site. Your thoughts? Interesting. If it's so I interesting. Have nothing to do, so they have to go. That's true. Yeah, why do people make art today, right? <laughs> but there's thoughts whether or not this was a sort of hunting ritual Native Americans would do for sort of hunting blessings, if you will. But there's not been much evidence for hunting out here either. That's the wall. But I, I don't know. That's just what researchers say. I don't see why they wouldn't hunt here. But apparently the area wasn't really abundant with resources and animal life. So who knows? The times before us are lost. But we have some of these remains to at least spark the imagination. Hot. What about the horses? What they eat? Humans. Little Thai girls. No. Sort of legs here. This one's been scratched through. It's like that horned figure there. That one looks old. There are just so many petroglyphs here. We're missing tons of them, no doubt. A lot of them are gonna be falling over, so we won't be able to see some of the signs. There's a ton more here. What is that, a uh, deer carcass? Jeez. How do you think it died? I, I would think mountain lion coyote, but it probably broke its leg here. Yeah. Couldn't go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what this was. I think this was like a massive just wall of petroglyphs and they gradually just fell down over time. Yeah. So this is more what the original would have looked like, I think. This is absolutely incredible. The fact that it's so hard to get to means it's a lot more untouched. Wow, look at these. I didn't even see these.
It's this little cave section. You can see. Looks like it might be a bat. But, um. Yeah, that's a bat. I wonder what was in there, if there was anything. Right, there's the car. Made it back. Bam, so sorry. <laughs> Gotta get the 775 there. Off road recovery. All right, well, thank you, Ralph. Oh, hope to see you again. Hopefully, yep. not for <laughs> the, the rest of I'll, I'll send you uh, the name of that restaurant over here. Okay, it, yeah, please do. And then, uh, yeah, sweet, be fun. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, hopefully it's not another rescue. Hopefully it's just another adventure. But yeah, well, appreciate you, man. Oh, no worries. We'll man. see you around. It really out. means a lot. We had finally done it, thanks to some awesome people. After all the attempts and days of adventure, we can now check Lagomarsino off the list in this season of Ancient America. <laughs>